Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friend Friday. Boop, boop. It's Friend Friday. It's Friday. I hope your week was spectacular. Um, this week, uh, I will be coming to you with a very special guest. And we are technically not going to be live when you're watching this on Friday. So I am not trying to trick you. I love you all too much to do that. Uh, but I'm going to be far, far away from my home, not my computer. And my good friend that's going to be joining me in just a second is actually in a whole other country. And it's the middle of the night for her when this is going to be airing. So uh, instead, you are welcome to put any of your questions, uh, your comments. So go ahead and put it right into the feed. I will be on live to answer any of your questions. And then she will be able to answer questions that you have for her, you know, a little while later. I won't I won't give you a timeline because, you know, she's got shit to do in her life. So, um, you know, it'll happen. But please ask away. Ask all the questions that you have. This week we're talking about starting our journey of connecting to our intuition uh, on the path as we progress forward, because at least here in the States, we can finally breathe a little bit. And so this was the perfect week for us to start talking about um, that sequence of the major arcana, which we talked about on uh, Wednesday in our Woo Wednesday. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that yet, make sure that you check over there. So uh, we talked about briefly, we talked about the fool. You know, my lighting's always weird. We talked about the fool. <laughs> check. And then the magician. I love this deck. Um, and it's pretty diverse. That was part of the reasons why I bought this deck and the high priestess. So we'll talk a little bit more about these, but I want to um, bring in like a friend who really has helped me try to get on track um, over the last probably, I don't know, year and a half two years. I don't even know how long it's been. Um, she is incredible. I'm going to let you let her introduce herself to you a little bit. Um, but her name is Maricela Robles. And um, she is an incredible author of just the cutest freaking books that she's going to talk about. She's a certified uh, meditation coach and the owner of Meditation Fairy, which Without further ado, hello. Wait, I didn't. Do the, I didn't do the cute part of putting your name up. Puto. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, Maricela. Um, you were the first person I thought about when. Um, when I knew that this was going to be the beginning conversations of, again, kind of really connecting with intuition because the work that you do is specifically with kids, right? And, and helping kids to do meditation and start that early connection, which I, I just love. I'm totally obsessed with <laughs> meditation, very meditation world. Um, I've got grandkids, but frankly, I go in for myself. So... <laughs> So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, tell everybody, hey. Hello, everyone. And I'm super happy. Thank you for bringing me here. Um, I always love speaking to you. I think we always have the most amazing conversations. And so obviously, when you said you were having Friend Fridays, I was like, I, I need to be I need to be in there, please, please. <laughs> so yes, so um, I guess for people to know a bit more about what I do, as you said, so I'm an author, and I specialize in writing books for children that help introduce them to meditation. And um, I think the biggest um, difference to the books that I write is that they're not how-to books, they're not activity books. They're actually just plain out stories because uh, since I'm trying to get them like really early, I'm trying to get the kids, you know, from four years old, even three and a half, if you've already started reading to them, you know, and you need to get to them through a story because that's how our brain is geared to learn best. That's what, you know, we all have learned through generations. And, and I thought, well, yeah, I started with my own, you know, son when he was four, because I wanted to introduce him to meditation as well. So that's how it all started. Yes, I'm also a certified uh, meditation and mindfulness teacher. But my heart really is in the 
in the writing and and the creating and the stories and you know doing sort of guided meditations for the kids and and just sort of explaining right and helping the parents a bit of a sometimes we just need to hear it in a different way for for it to click but yeah so in a nutshell um that's what i do (laughs) yeah and i think that's really important because um I mean, there are a lot of kids books. There are a lot of, like you said, kind of how to books. But what I really love about everything that you do with Meditation Fairy um, is, you know, it's for the kids, but it's really geared like towards the parents. It's helping parents get to a, a space where, you know, they're learning about mindfulness if it's not something that they already do or they're learning how to incorporate that kind of work in a super simple, like basic, easy to understand way for kids. And I think that we don't, um, I mean, you know, I'm a parent, I've got grandkids. And so I wasn't like, I didn't know anything about mindfulness or anything when my girls were little. And so now I will say that I, um, I do inundate like my grandkids with (laughs) stuff. Um, And it really is. So the first book that you wrote, um, and I'll have to make sure to find pictures of them so I can post up here too. Um, But the first book that, that I got from you, um, I think it, I think I got it before my dog always feels the need to chime in. If you can hear her in the background, just ignore her. Um, The first book, when I got it, I don't think you had, I don't think the second one was finished yet. So I had the first book. I took it with me a couple, two years ago, maybe for Thanksgiving. And I sat down with, I think I had six maybe of my grandkids with me and um, all different ages. Um, The youngest was maybe at the time, maybe five and um, up to eight, I'm going to say somewhere between five and eight, the group was, and they all had such a very different experience with it. And even though it may have seemed initially for me on the outset, like this is kind of a young book for the older kids, but they absolutely loved it. They absolutely loved it. So when you were thinking about, you know, writing the book and again, I know that you, um, you know, your son actually is the main character um, (laughs) in the books, which, which I absolutely love. Um, And he's so cute in real life too, not just his character in the book. Um, But I really love that idea of like, just starting off with like a simple story, right? And the story is very, you know, no spoilers here for people who haven't gotten the book yet, but it really is just like a discovery, right? It's this, you know, little boy who's showing his friend, um, like, yeah, you. it's really simple to just close your eyes and like create whatever, right? Exactly. And so, you know, that, I'm curious when you, you know, when you sat down and thought about like the perspectives on that, you know, how did that, how did you decide to kind of do it that way versus like from a parent perspective, like we normally would see like a parent guide, you know, of, yeah. of getting your kids started. So it's, it's funny because um, sort of, I wasn't thinking about the parents at all. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's like, I don't care about the parents. So I had, I had obviously Sebastian and, you know, he was four at the time. Um, and I was like, how, how do I explain this to him? Cause at that time I was already, um, you know, I would wake up really early. Um, and when I say early, I mean early for me. She because um, Yeah. Cause, um, for everybody. I know, Cause he was waking up already at like six o'clock or six fifteen. So I was waking up at five in order to be able to do a sort of about an hour or, or, you know, 45 minutes or so meditation. And many of the times um, he would then curl up sort of next to me, I would still be finishing my meditation with your curl ups. And so every time, what are you doing? And what are you doing? And what are you doing? And you can't tell a four year old I'm meditating and they go like, yeah, whatever, you know? So right. I was like, how, um, and, and as, as I started transforming sort of, as I started going through my own transformation journey of, of letting go of stuff and of understanding and more awareness, et cetera. And I realized how powerful it was. I thought I, I need to teach this to him. And so it was really this really big desire to go like, Oh my God, if he, if, if I only knew, like if he knows now, 
it will make his right. life so much different. Like yes. he will understand so many things. And it was, it felt like an imperative, urgent thing that I needed to do to be able to show him. I was like, I, can't, I don't want to wait until he's like 14 or 10 or whatever. No, he needs to know now so yeah. that it's normal. And, um, and I started sort of thinking and thinking, I've always been, um, I've always been a writer. Um, I had, I had written like one children's book, which is a rhyming book, a very typical, you know, Mm -hmm. it was about like visiting different planets and things like that, which will come out eventually as well. Um, I need to send it to the designer. But, um, so I thought, well, maybe I can just write him a book. And then I just started to, you know, yeah, just sort of waiting almost for the idea. And the way the way that my process works is a bit weird. Um, I don't know. I feel like an idea like circulating almost <laughs> like a, a little bird or a butterfly sort of nice. flying around my head. And I'm like, oh, it's coming, it's coming. And then yeah. just sort of a little, you know, the, the word, the title came up actually. It's like, you don't need your body to sell a boat. Actually, it was, did you know you don't need your body to sell a boat? That's what I got. And then, and then one day I was like, okay, that's it. And I just thought, oh, I need to write that down. And, and I started writing it and then just the whole book came out. And it was just me sort of as I was writing it. It was, um, I don't know, it's almost like I now realize it's like part download, part sort of me being inspired. And then, of course, you go back and you fix a few things here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was actually after the first book was published and after getting feedback from the parents um (laughs) the parents were like um he you know one of them was like he made us sit down in the living room close our eyes and look for the magic door and I was like (laughs) that was the point (laughs) it worked yay right (laughs) sounds like you're complaining but (laughs) that's what was meant to happen yeah and so and so they were like what do I do now and I was like oh (laughs) I was like I hadn't thought about you at all (laughs) right you're right yeah yeah it was only then that I thought oh okay the parents need more explanation and need more help and need that perspective as well and so it was then I went like okay what if I can explain to them what I've actually done in the book and what it means and what they're learning and that's how this whole thing started. And then I decided eventually to create sort of Meditation Fairy World, which is the online platform where sort of so I'm awesome. putting all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In. yeah. Well, and, you know, to that point. So when so um, when I read the book with my grandkids um, at that time, Meditation the meditation fairy world um, wasn't um, really online yet. And so I personally, I did um, a meditation with the kids Mm -hmm. afterwards. And, um, you know, based on the book, like we basically did what the kids in the book did. Mm -hmm. And then I asked them afterwards, like, you know, did you see anything? And, you know, so on and so forth. And so I, I was so, so, so excited when, you know, the full creation of Meditation Fairy World happened because it is, I mean, again, it's kind of that two parts as a parent, if you already do some of these things, it can be really difficult to think about how do I explain Mm. this to my kids or get them involved, Mm. right? More importantly, if you're doing it from a mindfulness perspective, like I want my kids to already have these tools to use as Mm -hmm. they get older, like you said. Um, But then if I'm not someone who already knows about this or can just spontaneously do a meditation, you know, with my kids, now what? Now what do I do with this? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I know I've said this more than once now, but for real, when I actually went on <laughs> to Meditation Fairy World, because I bought it for, um, when you launched it, I bought it for uh, my, my again, my grandkids. And I just kind of got lost in there, like, oh my gosh, there's so many resources <laughs> in here. There's so many little things in here. And, you know, given also that, you know, you yourself are bilingual, um, I love that I want to say everything that's in there. You have a Spanish version of it as well, correct? So the books are the books are in English and in Spanish. Um, we're on the third book now that is going to be published hopefully by December, um, and that's also now going to be English Spanish. The German part is also now coming. 
Um, the one, the thing that I need to do, which I haven't done yet, is the meditations. The guided meditations are not in Spanish, so that's sort of the next step. But it's all about because I'm in such sort of creation mode. I want to be able to, you know, give like keep adding and adding because that's the whole point for me. That that it's it's easy that you know pa that kids keep having new things to do, that parents keep having new things to do, different explanations, different points of view. And um, so, yeah, but the idea for me, how I, I envisioned all of this happening, which is what I want at some point, because I'm originally from Mexico, but I don't live in Mexico. I live in Switzerland, right? And for, it's been really difficult finding things in Spanish, uh, in Mexican Spanish, basically for my son, for him to listen, for him to sort of uh, read even the books are all sort of anything that I can find is from either Spain or from somewhere else. And so I thought, gosh, there's so many expats around the world that want to keep their own sort of language and customs and maybe mannerisms or whatever for their kids to keep listening to that. How wonderful would it be if I can provide that in as many languages and accents as well as possible? So that that will come all at, at some point because since that is online, it's very easy to do. And then it's... Um, it's just natural because, and this is this is what I was, what I wanted to say in the spirit of sort of you know beginnings and and all of that with the sort of the arcana as you were saying, um, kids don't have you know they don't have any prejudice right and they don't have any any built up or ready misconceptions or thoughts or whatever um, you know and I have found that parents you say meditation and a lot of parents go like oh like you know my my kid is not going to be able to sort of want that or learn that or whatever and actually they're so open to it as long as it's fun and and easy and for them it's just a story and then they realize oh I can do that too and so actually it's the parents the ones that we have to take our you know glad pre you know misconception and oh I can't hear you I can't hear you I don't know what happened uh, there, there we go. go. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to be quiet for the dog. Um, but yeah, we kind of take our you have to take our bullshit blinders off is what I was saying. There, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because the kids and so so for me, that's part of also why writing the book, I thought that would be really easy to get also to the parents, because for the parents, you're just reading them a bedtime story. Right. Like you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say, and now we're going to learn about meditation. Right. Like you right. just like, you just go and say, Hey, I got you a new book. Let's read. And then you just read. Yeah. And then, and, and that's, um, that's it. And so there's so many, it's sort of, it's, that's the thing with stories. It gets rid of so many of the other issues and, you know, judgments or thoughts mm -hmm. or whatever that we may have. And then it just basically lands to like, okay, I'm listening to a story and, and, and that's it. Right. Right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's, I went on and on. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I appreciate it. And, and it is, I mean, again, I, I, for me, I feel like it's not something that we talk about, um, nearly enough, uh, as far as, you know, our kids and getting our kids involved in, you know, helping them find ways to change, um, to be more mindful, to be, you know, I don't even want to say, you know, like, I'll create like holistic things for the kids. But really, I mean, just getting them to settle, getting them to a space of calm, getting them to a place where they can start making their own decisions. And um, in, in very positive ways from a from a very kind of grounded place. And mm -hmm. I think that's the important thing. Sorry, my dog's still being weird. Um, that's the important thing about you know what you're doing and and just starting that so early. I just love it, you know. Yeah. And you know, so again, you know, this week as we talk about um, you know starting this fool's journey, right? And I know it's always weird with this camera um, on because it never wants to focus. There we go. <laughs> Um, you know, starting with the fool's journey really is about, you know, not necessarily from a child's perspective, but that space, that childlike space of, mm. you know, you, you don't know to be fearful yet. You don't mm. have the baggage of 
all the shit that's gone wrong in life or or the anxiety of what you've experienced. It's about starting this journey of, you know, just like with a clean slate, you know. Mm. And what if to me, I think about the journey of the fool through, you know, tarot of, you know, imagine if right? You were able to start out in that space, right? Where you could kind of leave all the other stuff behind and just be excited that something, you know, you're heading out on this adventure, right? And so, you know, in my mind, that's really what you've created this kind of, um, you know, door to starting this new, um, this new journey for them from, from this space of like, there's no impediments, right? There's nothing that's that's keeping them down. And then, you know, moving into the magician, right? So the magician is all about, again, as a child, right? Um, no, kind of having this innate feeling like that you can do anything. Like mm -hmm. I have the power to do anything, right? I know my uh, my youngest grandson, who I call BBJ, which stands for Big Baby Jesus, and now he's <laughs> now he's to the age where he's like, "Can you stop calling me BBJ?" No, I can't. I'm sorry, that's your name forever. <laughs> um, but I can remember when he was little, and um, just like he had this spirit of like anything, like I can do anything, anything mm. is possible. And that's really what the magician teaches us through our mm. journey. That like you have all the skills that you need. Mm. Right. Again, going back to that, like there's no baggage, there's no anxiety, there's no there's no part of you that is like, oh, am I good enough? Mm. The magician is telling you, like, you have all the shit that you need. Right. You have yeah. all the connections you need. You have everything you need. Um, and that's how the journey begins. It mm. begins with you having everything that you need. Right. Mm -hmm. Anything else is a bonus you yeah. know and then you know for this week especially you know kind of ending with the high priestess and you know her message really being um that of um connecting to intuition right connecting yeah. to um you know as you're just kind of starting out that journey and you you know okay i'm i'm out here i'm doing stuff i'm excited i've got everything i need and you know getting to meet like that little voice in your head that's always going to be there you know mm. and i love in this particular deck um and i haven't seen it in in other decks but there's actually this little baby in the deck mm. which um i mean i've seen i use this deck um I've probably used this deck off and on for about two years. Um, so I've seen the baby. It didn't really make a connection to me, though, really, until I wanted to talk to you about, again, that starting from the beginning, starting from that space of just safety and just knowing like you have this connection before there's even language, before there's the ability mm. to express yourself there's a knowingness that we're all just kind of born with that I think yeah. gets, gets kind of uh, tamped down as gets we get lost. older. And, and I'm, I'm so glad that you, you sort of, you touched on this point because I think one of the things at the beginning, um, a lot of parents go like, ah, oh, you know, kids don't need to learn about meditation. Like they're already in a natural sort of meditative state. You know, they're living in the moment, they're living in the now. And I'm, and, and, and it's true. Mm -hmm. I think at the beginning, like you say, like the fool and like the magician, you are born with all of the knowledge, with all of the possibility to create. You are born with everything. We have everything when we are born. The problem is <laughs> that <laughs> as we get older, all of those, we start picking up cues. We start picking up information from our parents, from other kids, from teachers, from this, people who might not, you know, maybe themselves have issues or whatever and we start thinking oh maybe i don't have everything that i need maybe yes. not everything is possible maybe i can't do this maybe and then you start putting limitation upon limitation upon limitation and what to me what meditation does it, it is it's a tool yeah. that kids can learn to make sure they remember that right. they always that they don't forget and that they remember that they have everything that they need, that they keep that connection. Because to me, that's the 
that's the magic as it were and the wonder of of meditation of why it connects you back to center and you go back to yourself and and however you want to call it so sort of to unity or the universe or your higher self or your higher consciousness or god like whatever name we want to give it we have all of that love and feeling and affection when we're born we have all of the powers of creation within us and then somewhere along the way we sort of lose it mm-hmm. and meditation helps us get back to that connection within ourselves yeah because it's not about oh something outside of me is going to give it to me no it's it's us right. it's it's within us like you say it's the intuition that little thing and to to keep to be able to keep learning and hearing that voice and understanding that that's me and I need to listen to it and honor it as well right that yeah. that for me is to do is like you know the the crux yeah <laughs> of it yeah. All. yeah and you know and and that's all, and all yeah all of that i mean all of that and and you know for me as i talk to women about you know starting starting um you know not just like a new process, but just starting, um, you know, on a new journey, moving forward, finding a new direction, right? Mm -hmm. Is that um, any tools that you have to kind of get you back to that space to help you get back to a place before you doubted yourself, right? Before Mm -hmm. the world Mm -hmm. kind of told you a bunch of bullshit that Mm -hmm. wasn't true and you and you stopped listening to yourself you stopped listening to that little voice um you know that has always been there but the louder the outside world is the harder it is to hear you know Mm -hmm. and so you know again i just i love the fact that you know this week especially that you're here um to, to talk about this like what if our kids had that tool so early on, right? So that every time somebody tried to put on some bullshit or tell them a thing, they were just like, like not, <laughs> no, thank me, you. Let me listen. That's not <laughs> what my intuition is telling me. Exactly. So exactly. That can't be true, you know? And so, yeah, I just, I, just, I mean, I love everything about you, but um, that especially is what I really love. And I really, really, really hope that. Um, you know, that anybody watching, anyone that watches this from here to eternity, you know, goes and sees what's going on in Meditation Fairy. Um, I'll make sure that there's a link here. Um, but more importantly um, than any of it is just like as a reminder for mm. you know, as parents, as grandparents, as aunts and uncles, like if there are children in your life in any way, shape or form, helping them, giving them the tools to keep them on track, keep Mm -hmm. them focused on um, connecting to their little voice, right? Mm -hmm. To knowing that no matter what else happens, like you got it, you got everything that you need. Finding ways to do that is, I mean, so, so important, like the most important thing, you know? And then focusing on us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're supposed to start with us first and, you know, I guess it depends. I can say that now because like my kids are grown. So, you know, (laughs) my work, you know, no, but, um, (laughs) but, you know, and then, but for ourselves as women, Mm. also kind of taking that step back and looking at, looking at what that path can be, um, you know, where do we start? I always hear like, well, I don't even know where to start. Like, I don't even know. Mm what I want, how I want to do this, what needs to change. And the reality is, and you, you know, you mentioned too, like you hear these things from the outside thinking that, you know, I, I'm going to go out here and read this book to find an answer to my problem. Mm. There's not a book out there mm. unless you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's going to tell you what's best for you in, in your life. But you have the answers, right? Mm -hmm. You have that knowledge if you are just able to sit and learn to listen again to that little voice inside of you. And it's not, listen, I'll tell you, it's not easy. It's not like one day you figure it out. And, you know, I will say Maricela meditates more than anybody I think I've ever would ever know. All the people I know combined, I think don't meditate (laughs) 
as frequently as you do. I know you, <laughs> and I know people but, that I'm like, I don't meditate enough. So right. They're meditating right. like three to four hours a day. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but it's not, it, it's not one of those things that it's like, oh, I got it. I figured it out. Oh, no. I heard that voice. Or I love, I love the analogy of your um, downloads. I was writing it down like those butterflies or, you know, like that little message kind of floating around and you being open to letting it land. Exactly. Right? I mean, that's, a, that's a perfect, I think, analogy for thinking about getting, receiving those messages from your intuition. Mm. Um, and yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to make like a little image of that now, just <laughs> in my head. Um, but, you know, finding finding ways to allow that little voice to happen um, for yourself, for those answers is just like so important. So, you know, we besides the tarot stuff this week, obviously, we, you know, um, we have talked about I have talked about this notion of needing to make sure that we are saying what we need to say, that we're expressing mm. ourselves that, you know, um, I, I wouldn't say a breakthrough at all, but, you know, I spent many years working on diversity and inclusion work and obviously everything that's happened with, you know, in the, in the States specifically, um, or especially, I mean, it happens to some degree everywhere. Um, the, the chaos and craziness and anxiety that's been happening for frankly, you know, more than even the four years, but yeah. in the last couple of weeks um, really has kind of reminded me. And I think a lot of, a lot of other people that we, no matter what we're doing, you yeah. know, the work I do right now is not specific yeah. to diversity and inclusion, but it's included, right? Yeah. There isn't, there isn't one or the other. There isn't, yeah. You know, in the email this week, guys, like, I'm, you know, there are people out there who will tell you, like, oh, we're not going to talk about politics and religion and whatever here. I'm going to talk about that shit. Because how can you not? No. Um, and there is a, you know, there's a fine line, you know, um, this is not a news, a cable news channel, right? So I'm not a pundit, but the realities are that our intuition, who we are, this path that we're walking, you know, yes, initially we're walking it alone, but as we've been saying, the world eventually gets involved, right? Mm. And who you are and what you look like and how you feel in your body and your body being in other spaces affects how we move through our life, how we're yeah. able to navigate starting again, refocusing, mm -hmm. listening mm -hmm. to our intuition. And so, you know, it to me, it's so important that we are being really clear and vocal about, um, you know, where we are, what's going on, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, Meditation Fairy is more, geared towards children. Um, but even the fact that there are, like you said, multiple languages, things are translated into, there are um, different accents, you know, that that kids can hear in the books. I know you've, um, I, I listened to what some of the things you have online. And I love the fact that a you did one yourself. Um, but <laughs> that you have other voices that there are other accents, there are other people involved there. And I think even for our kids, like, having them see that the world is not a monolith, right? Mm. There, is, there is variety. I'm not a subscriber of necessarily to the like, there's, we have more in common than we have different. Let's focus on that. No, I want you to focus on what makes me fucking special and mm -hmm. different, right? That's, that's what's important to me. I want you to see all those things. And so I love the fact that that's really, you know, even in subtle ways for kids, that's something that you have created in that space. And I think that's really beautiful. And I think you've done yeah. that. Well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all have to start somewhere. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, if, well, I, I know obviously you talk a lot about it as well. And I mean, I, to be honest, I, for me, it was it was motherhood and struggles that I had to sort of go through. Ones that happened, that's where I ended up finding meditation, 
because mainly I was like, A, I don't want to feel, you know, the way that I was feeling. And two, like, I didn't want to be like, you know, that parent or that sort of the resentful, angry mom, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was my driver. But mm -hmm. you can have a different driver, you know, it can have, it, it can have, and whatever it is, you just need to sort of, you know, because I think that the, the most difficult part is the starting part. Yeah. And to say, you know, and to make it a bit of like, well, you know, like the full, like, so what, what happens? What, what can happen? Like, yeah. like if I try this meditation thing for like five minutes a day, you know, for a week, <laughs> like what can happen? Right. <laughs> what's the worst, what's happen? The worst that right. can happen, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Just give it a go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Perfect. Well, I thank you so, so much for um, making time to talk to me and yes. more importantly, to talk to um, all the people who will get a chance to see how uh, another one of my amazing friends. <laughs> I thank you so much for that. Um, I will make sure that all of you um, have a link to Meditation Fairy and I, I cannot express enough to you all watching. Like just just go in there, just see what's happening in there. Just let your kids play around. And there's like activities and I don't even want to spoil it for you. I, I, I really, I just want you to go to Meditation Fairy um, and just see, just see what's happening over there. It's it's beautiful. I know you have another book coming out. Um, have you yeah. named it? No, I haven't named it. So if anybody listening wants to um, jump in with the naming, please go in. There are some hints about what it's about in my Instagram on the highlights. Um, but yes, it's about it's it's about learning. It's about the world that we see uh, differently through our heart as opposed to through, through our eyes. And so it's all about that journey and explaining to kids, what does that mean and how it goes? And Aww. so I have like a list of titles, some of them, which have been suggested probably by the moms because they sound very much <laughs> like I, eyes wide shut. And I was like, that's a Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> like you didn't get your kids involved. You got yourself to Right, right. <laughs> There'll be no Fifty Shades here, lady. Exactly. 50 shades. No Fifty Shades of Heart here. No, ladies. <laughs> it's a kid's book. Oh, I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's just a bit of fun. And, yeah, so it's um, Vanda, who's the illustrator. She's um, doing the last bit. So hopefully um, hopefully it'll get finished in the next couple of weeks. And then and then it can be out in the world in December. In Hopefully in all three languages, like in English and oh, Spanish awesome. and in German. I love so, that. So yeah, yeah, we're working on those simultaneously to try and get them out as well. Yeah, and that's the yeah. other beautiful piece before I let you go is that all of the images in these books were hand illustrated by your sister. Is it your sister-in-law? Yeah, it's my sister-in-law. Yeah, that's oh what God. takes forever. Well, I mean, cause yeah. Cause yeah, <laughs> you, you have no idea. You said if you, oh. she has to do it first, all of the outline, and then she has right. to let it dry, and then she has to start coloring, and then she has to let it dry. And oh my god, it just it takes so a it, while, but it's beautiful. It's real, it, like it's art. It's not like she's sitting mm. on the computer, yeah, no. creating these images. She is hand painting all of these images, and they're just so cute. And they're just, <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll stop gushing. About <laughs> Um, but really, I mean, again, like so from from a woman's perspective, right, from the perspective of like women getting shit done. Mm. Hello. Here we go. A woman of <laughs> business you should support. Um, and the fact that you have another woman, too, that's like helping you doing this, growing this. It's all just so beautiful. Like there's a million reasons I can give for everybody watching to go to <laughs> Mary, Thank you. Um, and get involved, but um, I'll let you go. Um, I'll let everybody kind of marinate with this. Um, I'll make sure that there are links um, to, to come and check out what's going on in uh, meditation for your world. I might, I might even throw in like the Amazon link because the books, at least the first two books are available on Amazon. So I totally want everybody to get those. So um, thank you so, so much. Marisa. Thank you. Uh, it was so nice. All the time. Um, make sure that you stay around with us in our, in our friend family. And um, I'm sure that you'll, 
you'll be hearing about Maricela again in the group. Like, don't. Yeah. I'm going to jump in all the time. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Well, thank you so much. Thanks Perfect. for watching. Everybody have thank a spectacular you. weekend and stay magical. Bye.